Now, many people look upon making a mistake as a failure. I like to look upon mistakes as an opportunity to learn. So we've got such an opportunity now. I screwed up in my last video. We were playing with transistor current sources. And uh, I wonder if you could figure out how. Uh, the fundamental setup that we had here to measure what was going on is sound, and it works. Uh, however, there was a detail that I, you know, I know better and I ignored. You know, I grew up using these, uh, these analog meters like the Simpson 260 here. And one of the things that we get lazy about and forget about was back then, these meters didn't have the really high input impedance that modern digital multimeters have. You know, when you're measuring voltage on a DMM, the input impedance is typically 10 mega ohms, And in most circuits, you can ignore that. But that's not the case here with the Simpson 260. So let's take a look at what that is and how it affected my results. Now if we zoom in on the face of the Simpson 260 meter here, uh, we'll give a clue as to where the problem lies. So we can see it says here on the meter, uh, sensitivity is 20,000 ohms per volt. And in other words, what that means is that the meter movement is a 50 microamp meter movement. So when you have it on a one volt scale, there's 20,000 ohms in series with the meter movement. So if you have it on a 10 volt scale, is 200,000 ohms in series with the meter movement. So the input impedance of the meter is 200,000 ohms, 200k ohms. So okay, well, again, in many cases that won't matter, but it certainly does matter in the measurements that we are making here. Let's take a look at the configuration here. So now knowing that this meter really just looks like a 200k ohm resistor to ground, we stuck a 200k ohm resistor to ground here, and I measured 190k ohm output impedance well, guess what? That was dominated by this 200K. The output impedance of this uh, current source is actually much, much higher. Now, this is one of those mistakes that uh, if you're not familiar with using uh, meters like this, you can certainly excuse. Uh, I've certainly, I've used these meters like this for over 30 years and I should know better. So uh, I definitely screwed up. And I had some clues that I screwed up and I ignored them. Uh, the one clue that I had is that in previous experience I've had with current sources, I know that they measured much higher than 190 K ohms. I just figured I had a crappy transistor and I ignored that clue. The second clue I had is, you remember when we were making voltage measurements, I measured about 380 um, millivolts or so across a 1K resistor, but we we're seeing 420 microamps. That's a lot more than I would have predicted, and uh, I don't think I had, you know, that resistor was much lower in tolerance. So the extra current, guess where it's going, right? The extra current that we're measuring here is going through that 200K ohm to ground. So two clues that I ignored, uh, and uh, I, I should have found this error myself. Now the late, great uh, Bob Pease from uh, National Semiconductor um, wrote a really good book called Troubleshooting Analog Circuits. And one of the things he wrote in there, when you're doing troubleshooting, if you see something that looks funny, his quote was, record the amount of funny. Okay, put it down in your notebook that, hey, this didn't really look exactly right. Don't ignore it. Record it. Because oftentimes there's value in that funniness that you might discover later. And that's exactly what I should have done also. So let's go make this measurement correctly and show you how much of a difference there can be. Okay, now just to review, uh, the way we've got this set up right now, the volt meter is reading 10 volts. So I've got this sitting at 10 volts which now we know is putting 200 K ohms between there and ground, and that's coming through this meter, or this uh, ammeter here that we're measuring. And as I vary the voltage, uh, we can see how much that current changes, say 420 microamps when it's at 10 volts, and as I vary that voltage, you know, say down to about 5 volts there, we drop to 394, you know, down to about 2 volts, you know, right about here, or about 378. Okay, so those are the numbers that we use to calculate the output impedance, but it turns out again that that's being dominated by the input impedance of the Simpson 260. So let's replace the 260 with uh, a DMM, and uh, that's got a 10 mega ohm input impedance, and then we'll see how much the current changes when we change that voltage. All right, so here we go. So now I've got uh, you know 10 volts sitting at uh, the output of the current source, and I can see my current now, instead of being 420 microamps, it's 370. Okay, so uh, there's that uh, 50 microamps that was going into the meter. Okay, this is uh, just slightly lower than I would have predicted from reading the voltage before, but that's because the voltage across the emitter resistor 
also has the base current there as well. So that's the, an, another small source of uh, you know, difference, but this is much more reasonable. So now with 10 volts uh, at the output of the current source, 372 microamps, and let's turn uh, that voltage down. If we go down to say about 5 volts now, well, we went from 372 down to 370. Only a 2 microamp change in that current source. Let's go down to about 8 volts here, or uh, excuse me, 2 volts across the uh, current source. We're down to 369. All right, so if we use those numbers, say a 3 microamp change uh, with an 8 volt change, that's uh, you know about uh, 2.6, 2.7 mega ohms uh, output impedance for the current source. Really, very, very good. But now, if you think about that, well, that's 2.7 mega ohms. The input impedance to the fluke multimeter is 10 mega ohms. That's uh, pretty close to it. It's only about a factor of five different. So that means even even in this case, the meter is still affecting it ever so slightly. In fact, if I disconnect the meter, you can see a, a, about a one microamp change, uh, just about a microamp change or so in uh, the, the current uh, and the, that's shown in the ammeter because that ammeter in our configuration here is reading not only the current going into the current source, but also current that might be flowing through the VOM. So even when, you, when you've got some really good high impedance uh, measurement equipment, sometimes you still have to worry about it. All right, so the lesson here is always take into consideration the loading that your test equipment is going to place on the circuits that you're testing. Uh, even a 10 mega ohm input impedance of a modern DN DMM can slightly affect circuits, particularly when you're dealing with high impedance circuits like a current source here. Similarly, when you're using an ammeter, you've got to consider the burden voltage, how much voltage is dropped in the meter to measure that current. It's not a short circuit. There is a shunt resistor there that typically has got a voltage drop across it. You do have to take that into consideration. Uh, even uh, if you're probing with an oscilloscope, uh, what kind of loading is the probe placing on your circuit and how will the circuit react to that load? So it's an important lesson to learn, something that I've learned many, many years ago and continue to learn, and unfortunately in this case, have to be reminded of that it's something I already knew and I ignored in this case. Uh, the other lesson here is to pay attention to when things look a little funny. You know, if you make a measurement, you, many times you kind of you know, know what you're about you're expecting to see. If it doesn't look like what you expect, you know, make a note of that, and it might mean something. And we found out in this case that it actually did. So uh, thank you to uh, my YouTube viewer, because let me see, his, call, his uh, YouTube username here is Bursic Viking. Uh, he's the one that pointed this out on my previous video, number 190 on the transistor current source uh, uh, video and uh, pointed out that uh, I had made a mistake and I indeed did. So egg on my face, I own up to it and uh, hopefully gave you an opportunity to, uh, to learn from my error. Anyway, thanks again for watching and for your understanding and uh, hope to see you again in future videos. Thank you.